free climb, ascending without the aid of mechanical devices. Then it... In California's Yosemite Valley, granite peaks stand like sentinels, guarding a passage into a world of risk. Climbers come to challenge these dark monuments, which were formed by a glacier 15,000 years ago. The greatest monument in the valley is El Capitan, a rock wall that rises to a place where silence is a language. Vertical and absolute, El Capitan is an exercise in dizziness. A pebble dropped from the summit would fall almost to the ground without touching the rock face. There's not an easy step anywhere on El Capitan. I'm your host, Kurt Gowdy, with a remarkable story of three mountaineers and their daring effort to free climb El Capitan. With permission from the National Park Service, they will undertake this unusual climb. 26-year-old Ron Kauk, Yosemite Valley resident, has been climbing since he was a boy. This free solo on Yosemite Falls was part of his training program for El Capitan. Free climbing stresses hand strength. 31-year-old Werner Braun has spent over half his life in the mountains. Although he's functionally deaf, his balance and his equilibrium are superb. Beverly Johnson from Wyoming has climbed on mountains all over the world. At 34, she's one of the best female mountaineers at work today. Developing finger strength is the most important physical exercise for the climbers as they move into the final months of preparation. More than a quest for the summit, this team seeks to free climb in a style that no other group of professionals could match. El Capitan was first conquered on an aided climb in 1958. Here, Werner and Ron demonstrate the techniques of aided climbing hanging by ropes and pounding mechanical devices into the rock to help them ascend. El Capitan has a reputation of being the toughest rock face in North America. Imagine a team of climbers trying to scale El Capitan without the aid of these devices. That's exactly what Ron Kalk and his partners will attempt to do by free climbing the rock face. In this practice session, Ron free climbs by relying solely on finger and arm strength to pull him up. Beyond the presence of a safety rope, no other ropes or mechanical devices will be used. Ron's hands are so strong that he has been known in the climbing world as atomic fingers. Earlier this year, the climbers came to El Capitan. They had decided that a winter assault would be best to reduce the sweat and slip on their hands. Also, the cool air would keep the granite at a reasonable temperature not too hot to the touch. You're lucky. You're lucky you don't hear these kind of things. For the next few days, the climbers will inhabit a private, vertical world, living by the strength of their hands. Special climbing shoes are tight-fitting and soft, with sticky rubber soles. This is the second time that a team has attempted to free climb El Capitan. The climbers face three major obstacles. The traverse above the sickle ledge at 750 feet, the flake traverse at 1,400 feet, and the great roof at 2,000 feet. The summit stands at 3,593 feet. We join the team at the 575-foot level as Werner Braun leads the pitch in an effort to save Ron's atomic fingers for the more demanding work that lies ahead. He must be feeling pretty good today. Going. Hey, Werner, smile! This is a real long step, right? Yeah, it's a long step. It wants me good here, okay? I got you. Go for it. 
Look like he just I got this little edge cut. up here. Got it. <laughs> Above the sickle ledge at 750 feet, the climbers face a dilemma. The crack system that had provided finger and toe holes to this first ledge suddenly ends. They have to move laterally to find another seam in the wall, which means a pendulum swing on the end of a rope. The technique is acceptable as the climbers don't gain any altitude by swinging across to a new crack system. Whoa, ow! Duck! You're gonna have to dive for it. I know. Well, don't wear yourself out. No! Then you miss, you gotta turn in a hurry or it's all over. Go for it. Diving! Maybe. You got it? Yeah, I got it. All right, good job. Honey. And now I presume if I fall out, what I do is flatten myself on the rock and hope the terry cloth. Is yeah, well, let me know what you're doing so I can feed you slack. I don't want to be the one to pull you off. Okay, pull it up. Working on the new crack system, Beverly shows the patience and ingenuity needed for a long climb. Soon after her lateral movement on the rope, Ron Kauk crossed the same section of rock by free climbing, an effort that removed any doubt there. about a violation yeah, of the free climb there. rules. Does it look all right above you? Yeah. Well, this is really Ron's climb. Um, Warner and I are just up here for the view. Well, not really for the view, because we do a lot of the pitches and that makes it easier on Ron. By climbing these, these pitches that aren't so difficult, we let Ron save himself for the stuff that really is on the edge. I mean, he's probably the only person in the world that could do those pitches, the real hard ones. You got some good protection in? Yeah, I've got some anchors. Okay, Ron, I'm off. Okay, great, good job. I don't know. I'm not even sure this is the stance. Linked by a single rope and the desire to reach the summit, the climber's fate is in their fingertips. The wintry heights of Yosemite Valley in the Sierra Nevada mountains offer a hundred impressive peaks. And yet for grandeur and difficulty of climbing, none of them compares to El Capitan, the world's largest monolith. On this mountain, a team is free climbed to establish their current position 1,330 feet above the valley floor. Beverly Johnson Jew Mars up the safety rope, bringing gear for the second day's work. Looks like about 150 foot. It is very cold in the rock face in the early morning, and the climbers need to stretch their hands and feet before they can begin. Gymnastic chalk reduces the moisture on their hands and lets them grip the rock. Looks great. That means it looks scary. This morning's challenge is the flake traverse at 1,400 feet. Werner will try it first. There you go. Yeah, pull up on it. Okay, foot up to the other edge. Other edge. Left foot. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Up, huh? I missed the fall. I couldn't see it. It's this further down. Well, what do you want to do? 
Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tired. Well, you can come back and rest and try it again, or I'll try it. I don't care. You want to try it? About 80 pounds of equipment need to travel with the team. Here comes the moving van. And for the moment, Beverly Johnson gets the workhorse chore. Now, Ron will try to surmount the flake traverse, which takes its name from the cornflake texture of the bumpy granite. Since his hands are often above his head and drained of blood, Ron tries to improve the circulation in them. Warner. Warner. You all rigged up? You got your ears on? Yeah. I can see what I gotta do. I just gotta make sure I got the strength to do it. Okay, I got it, Warner. I'm at the belay. That's gonna be about all we can do today. We can bivy here. All right. Okay. With the difficult, bumpy granite of the flake traversed behind them, the team bivouacks for the night by suspending collapsible cots from the rock wall. I said I'll handle the cooking, huh? Although most of us wouldn't get much sleep in this position, hanging 1,425 feet off the ground, the climbers have no choice. Stiff-limbed and fatigued, they prepare for a chilly night during which the temperature will drop to 20 degrees. For all of them, the summit still seems far away. As dusk comes to El Capitan, the climbers begin to understand the overwhelming proportions of the task that they have set for themselves. The sound of popping corn ends the day. Already this team of climbers has surpassed the other free climb expedition on El Capitan. Reviewing their achievements so far, they have found a route over the sickle ledge and traversed to a new crack system, which Ron Kaup accomplished on a daring free climb. Ron also led the way over the flake traverse at 1,400 feet. And now fatigue must be considered a factor as the team's efforts have taken a toll on their reserves of energy. Their third morning on El Capitan is bright and clear. Though their hands are stiff and burned with pain, none of them looks down. Their hopes are lifted up toward the next obstacle, the Great Roof, a narrow ledge that no other free climbing team has ever conquered. At this point, the summit is hardly the goal of the climb. Rather, the careful application of each team member's skills as they prepare to move step by step over this treacherous section of granite. Hey, man, are your hands warming up? They look pretty cold, though. They're stiff. They were, they were stiff, huh? Yeah. Sometimes my hands, they get real cold like that, and I can't get them warm. You must have bad circulation. I do. Arthritis. Can't, I don't know how I could have got it. <laughs> With a flurry of chalk dust, Ron Cock readies his hands for the most demanding work they have ever done on a mountain. Everything we need. The narrowing of the rock wall makes the task increasingly difficult.
Hey, Warder. There's some slippery moss up here. It's wet, so if I can keep three points on the rock, maybe I won't slip. I have to make a reach, though. Watch the rope. Be careful. Some tiny face holes out here. All right. My hands are really stiff. Maybe I can't. Be careful. Yeah, the big edge yard on the right. Oh, okay. There's a fixed pin up here. Right. Pins from a dozen different aided climbs have been left in the rock face and come as a welcome surprise to the free climbers. Oh, man, looking down is too much. <laughs> I think I'll just keep looking up, so listen if you can. <laughs> The edge is really sharp up here. Whoa. Hang on, man. <laughs> ah! Hey, be careful. Are you okay? I cut my finger. It's bleeding. It's going to make it a lot harder. It's slippery. Keep an eye on me. Take it easy, OK? Hey, Ron. What you do is go. Yeah. And you get no hands rough. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. God. You okay? Yeah, I don't know if my hands I'm getting right. too pumped up. I got you. My fingers can't take it. Wow. It's ripping me up. I'll give it some more. Hang in there, man. I mean, just go for it. Oh, come on. Oh. That's about it for me, Warner. It just took everything I got just to get to here. I know what it takes, but I just don't got it yet. Unable to go beyond the 1,900-foot level, Ron's frustration expresses the team's disappointment. Their traditional measure of mountaineering success, the summit, remains untouched. And yet this climb had more than traditional goals. For three days, the team executed daring and exhausting maneuvers, using only the body strength that they had developed during the long months of preparation. I ain't got nothing left. The team's innovative work on El Capitan has set the new measure for free climbing achievement while pushing the limits of this demanding sport to a new boundary. It's just too hard for us up there. Uh, it's gonna take a lot more training to get up that. <laughs>